in the late 70s, there was a woman who changed the face of gaming. Her name was Roberta Williams, and she wrote adventure games with graphics. They might not be much to look at in the present day, but they're largely responsible for the creation of the point-and-click adventure genre. Alongside her husband Ken, she formed Sierra, and sold millions of copies of subsequent titles, most notably the King's Quest games. Flash forward a few decades later, and a man by the name of Ludwig Strigius thought it was a terrible shame that so many titles in this genre were limited to DOSBox emulation. Scum VM was what followed, and a huge community of enthusiasts embraced the system in the years to come. Another decade passes and Valve releases Steam for Linux, followed by Proton, its own version of the Wine Abstraction layer. This was great news, and offered a whole host of new gamers attached to the Steam ecosystem the opportunity to jump ship to an entirely different platform. Except that a lot of the titles on there were emulated already, and now as users of Linux they had to go and emulate a game, then send it through an abstraction layer, which worked some of the time, but was less than ideal to say the least. Fortunately, Valve gave users the opportunity to use whatever version of Proton they wanted, including different ways of running it all together by permitting compatibility tools that didn't involve Proton at all. This led to the development of Boxtron by Patrick O'Bara, alias Dreamer. This would send all the games emulated by DOSBox into the Linux version instead of the Windows version, eliminating the Proton abstraction layer altogether. I made a video about it earlier this year, and I, after I had annoyed him repeatedly, we collectively managed to get the collector's edition of TIE Fighter working using a Linux version of DOSBox for the first time ever, and subsequently submitted a ticket to Valve about the game's issues. So what does this have to do with ScumVM, though? Well, instead of having DOSBox, many adventure games on Steam were packaged with ScumVM. You'll note that I said many, because some were stuck with DOSBox. Using the same methods that called the Linux version of DOSBox instead of a Windows one, Obara did that, but with ScumVM. So that both ScumVM and DOSBox versions of titles were instead routed to the native version of ScumVM, which would then detect them and launch them all while Steam was technically running the game in the background. The result was absolutely seamless when I tried it, and allowed you to use your Linux Munt setup as an external output, or QSIMP for some sound fonts. The changes you made were also persistent, and your time spent in-game was also logged by Steam. What this means is that not only is the compatibility layer no longer required by Steam, but the legwork is also taken out of setting up games outside of Steam and linking them to ScumVM manually, which is what you had to do before. A real time saver. He must have jumped. Fell all the way to ground level. Phew. Lucky escape. He must have jumped. Fell all the way to ground level. You. Lucky escape. You don't need to be an expert to see the difference that makes. Just like Boxtron, this compatibility tool is making life for Steam users on Linux that little bit easier. And since its primary purpose is to allow them to enjoy the best point-and-click adventure gaming environment possible, Dreamer couldn't have picked a better name for the project than Roberta.